The following is a special presentation of Denver Broncos Broadcast Productions, presented by Children's Hospital of Colorado. You guys ready? Let's do this. What Rod had that many other people don't have is that, that resiliency. You know, he went through some ups and downs, but guess what, Rod, he kept coming to work, he kept going on that field, he would be in there after practice. You know, he wasn't a guy that was a first round draft pick or 6'4", uh, the fastest guy. He made his way uh, by hard work. First in, last out, can't play without him, and that was Rod Smith. First of all, the fact that he was a practice squad guy and he went on to have the career that he did. His footprint on the Broncos, I mean, we don't have those runs without Rod Smith. Elway right to work on first down, got a block, going long, he's got a receiver! Smith, touchdown! He always would come up with big catches. It's like Rod, he big play Rod. He would be the first guy out there, the last guy to leave. All I understood was work. That's all I've ever done my whole life is work. Success comes from work. Yeah, you got your bag, baby. I'm banging for you. I promise. You. Good hit, dog. Throw the ball 16. I'll tell you, he found that thing tonight, baby. to the end zone, and it is pulled down for a touchdown. Rod Smith, what a reception. Well, Rod Smith did not come to the NFL with a silver spoon in his mouth at all. He grew up, as he would describe it, in the ghetto. Now, my childhood, it was, uh, you know what, it was amazing. I'm not going to say it was anything short of amazing. It was, it was tough. It really tested me, you know, as a, as a, as a young man in Texarkana, it, it, it was tough. Everything was, was about family to me still to this day. You know, my mom, you don't realize how hard you got it, uh, but my mom uh, raising five kids by herself, you know, in the system, it, it was brutal. It was always a financial stretch, you know, making ends meet, things like that. And uh, one big refuge for me was the Boys and Girls Club. I learned team over there. I learned about responsibility over there. You know, this is where you could do those things you can't do at home. The games, you know, basketball court. All of our basketball courts were broken in my neighborhood. Uh, now football, we played it anywhere. We, we played on dirt, we played on grass, we played on the street. And he said that when he played as a kid, like everybody does, he played with guys who had a lot of talent, a lot of talent. In our neighborhood, you had no choice but to play sports. Literally, you had no choice. Football in our neighborhood was, was the deal. And they literally would come to your door and tell your mom to tell you to come outside. She, they wouldn't ask, hey, tell him we're playing. <laughs> like, you had to go outside. And of course, we're playing tackle football. You ain't got pads and you got a flat football and we didn't care. We just, we just loved playing football. The drug scene was very, very heavy in my neighborhood. My idea was to escape. It wasn't to escape the neighborhood because mentally I was only gonna be there, but I gotta give myself a chance by getting out of this certain environment and give myself a different environment. So that's why sports and football, baseball, basketball, I didn't care what it was gonna be. It was gonna be something to get me out of that situation. That's the way I saw sports as a, as a means to an end versus more I loved it. I needed it to get out of my situation. As a young man with limited options, hard work was a value instilled in Rod Smith from a young age. If you want to really be a player, you're going to have to do the little things the right way. And you're going to have to do the little things the right way every day. It's just not once a week. It's what are you going to do the night before the game or your friends come in town or it's Thanksgiving and all of a sudden you've got to make those tough decisions. Can you put the team first? Do you have that type of maturity or do you have that type of mindset that you can separate yourself from not doing the right thing and Rod had that ability to do that consistently. You have to go above and beyond what what's required to be successful. Rod took it you know twofold he went to the next level 
The desire for something more out of life motivated Rod. His natural talent and relentless drive led him to excel as a high school quarterback, eventually landing him a spot on the team at Missouri Southern State University. Most people don't know I played quarterback my whole life. I never played any other position. I always played the quarterback. I was always the quarterback. Even in the hood game, I was the quarterback. I never caught a pass because I was throwing the passes. I was super slow, so I was perfect quarterback. <laughs> but I had football instincts. I could play faster than I ran, right? He took seven on seven one day in practice when I was injured and there was only one QB on the roster who had to go to run drill. He took seven on seven and he went 12 for 12 and he wasn't throwing check downs and wide routes to the backs. He was throwing post routes and comebacks. And I'm watching this and I'm going, this isn't good. He's doing better than I usually do in seven on seven. And he's, he's our starting X receiver. Like what the heck's going on? But he knew the game. He knew our offense. He knew the, my position so well because he played it growing up. Rod's time at MSSU was a test of his ability to overcome adversity, coaching changes, and a talented quarterback room meant that Smith wasn't getting playing time his freshman year. I got benched the first week of the first regular season game. I was, I was penciled in to start my freshman year at quarterback. Coach Wade was the head coach at Missouri Southern. Coach Wade got into a fight with our athletic director, not physically, but they had an altercation. So Coach Wade quit or got fired on Wednesday. Our first game was Saturday. <laughs> I was demoted to third team on Wednesday. Coach Cook, Bill Cook, lives here in Colorado, a great friend of mine to this day. He put me in third team. Allen Brown became the starting quarterback. Allen Brown was a JUCO transfer. And honestly, it was a great move because Allen broke pretty much every school record throwing the football that we had at the time. So I'm planning on transferring or doing something. I just know I'm not going to stay here and sit on the bench. Because we ran the run and shoot, you always have four receivers. And I remember them asking, well, can you catch? I'm like, dude, I play backyard football. Yeah, I can catch. And literally, that's how I got to start playing some receiver when I wasn't playing quarterback. And then Coach John Lance, he was coming in as the new head coach. Coach Lance, I said, well, listen, I'm, I'm not sitting on the bench. I deserve to play somewhere. I'm good enough to play somewhere. So my sophomore year, we had a new quarterback, Matt Cook, still friends. Matt and I alternated at quarterback. So when I wasn't at quarterback, I played receiver. So I ended up making third team all conference at receiver. <laughs> it was just a lot. For a college person to go through, it was a lot, but I dealt with it. And then my junior year comes up and he said, listen, here's the deal. If you play full-time receiver, Matt can play full-time quarterback. He said, you can be an all conference quarterback. You can start at quarterback for us right now, or you can be an all American receiver. He said, but this way we get both of you guys on the field at the same time. He said, I believe we can win more games that way. That was the key right there. We can win more games. I said, done. I want to win more games. I just care about winning. That's all I care about. Smith finished his career at Missouri Southern State with 3,043 receiving yards and 34 touchdowns, both conference records. He also set a school reception record with 153 catches and was named first team All-America by the Associated Press. Despite the accolades, Rod Smith came to Denver in 1994 as an undrafted free agent. You know, Rod really played great football, you know, his senior year in college, and he played extremely well and he had all the intangibles that you look for in an athlete. Going into the NFL is, is very scary. When you come from a small school like I did, I was supposed to go to the combine and I didn't get to go to the combine. And, you know, you promise some of these things sometimes and they don't happen, they don't materialize. So I've always been guarded. Still to this day, I'm guarded. I just believe in what I can produce. Because sometimes you can't believe in people, unfortunately. He can still tell you the teams that passed on him. I'm laying on the couch and I watched the first day of the draft and the, the Chiefs guy called me and said, we're thinking about taking you in the third round. And I'm, I'm scared, I'm excited. And then I remember him calling me back and telling me no. They said, well, Chris Penn, you know, he went to a bigger school, he's faster. And when they told me that, it hurt. This guy's better than you, that's all it hurt. See, in my neighborhood, if somebody's better than you, we play until I win. He was not imposing, unimpressive. He, you know, I guess he was six feet tall, 190 or something like this, uh, but he was not, 6'5 and 230 or 240. 
First time I met Rod Smith, obviously, was the first day of uh, rookie camp. I uh, came in there as an undrafted free agent. Really didn't pay a lot of attention to him because he was an undrafted free agent. And obviously, uh, he took it to the next level, as we all know. He had a chip on his shoulder the whole time. He wanted to be one of the best to ever play the game. My first impression of Rod Smith was tough guy. He wasn't huge. He was a good sized receiver though. Uh, he was, you know, taller than a lot of other receivers that we had at the time. Um, and his work ethic, it just stood out. You know, Rod, he was going to be there early, he's going to leave late, and he's going to outwork everybody on the field. I'm going to run all day. I'm going to do whatever I got to do to make this football team. Coming up, Rod Smith, the rookie, learns what it takes to work like a professional. We now return to Rod Smith, Catching Greatness, presented by Children's Hospital of Colorado. Rod's work ethic and attention to detail landed him a spot on the practice squad, and he worked hard to make the most of his first year with the Broncos. He was just trying to make enough plays in, in training camp that he would catch the eye of, of somebody. I just remember not getting many opportunities, you know, my rookie year. And I didn't know why, so so it hurt when I was when I the, the time I got cut. It hurt because I'm like, you didn't even give me a chance. So I'm mad that I didn't get a chance, not because my skills don't match, but I didn't know about the practice squad. I didn't understand that, you know? And I remember walking up those stairs, talking to Bob Ferguson, because he was the GM at the time. And he said, Yeah, Rod, uh, we're, we're gonna let you go. And I'm just, I'm literally, every emotion in my body was there, but you can't bring it out right now. And I'm getting ready to turn around to go back downstairs and get my stuff. And he said, but we want to keep you on the practice squad. I was like, huh, what, what, what do you mean? He said, well, we have a practice squad. I said, I don't understand what that means. He said, well, he said, well, what's happening is we'll cut you. If you clear waivers in 24 hours, we'll uh, sign you back to the practice squad. He said, you only make $3,300 a week. I'm like, what? I said, dude, you understand I'm the richest person in my neighborhood if I make $3,300 a week? That's what I'm saying to myself. And I'm like, $3,300? He said, you only make $3,300 a week. I'm like, dude, there's nobody I ever met in my life that make $3,300 a week. I said, so I don't have to go home. I just wanted to get some clarity. I said, I don't have to go home. He's like, no. That's how I got to the practice squad. And then, trust me, I put those cleats on my feet and I told people for 14 years, as long as I had these cleats on my feet, I'm going to give them everything I got. And that's what I chose to do. I looked at the practice squad as an amazing accomplishment for me. I didn't look at it as if I was less than everybody else. I get a chance to work every single day with these cleats on my feet and I can get better. Because I, I, I knew I wasn't a receiver, I was athletic. He was elevating his game to be on that level of what Mike Pritchard was, what Anthony Miller was. I could hone the skill if they just gave me some time, and the practice squad was a way for me to get some time. Rod Smith has three of the most important ingredients for anybody, let alone a football player, and that's passion number one. He had a great passion for the game. He wanted to excel without a question about it. The second thing is character. He had an incredible character coming from a little small school. And the last thing is work ethic, and nobody worked any harder than Rod at the time. He is very special in all those categories, and you recognize recognized it immediately with him. You don't see many guys that go from a practice squad to having the kind of career that he did. That's special. Elway gets time going deep for Rod Smith. He's out there. He's got it. Touchdown. You know, the deep ball in the NFL is, is a highlight thing. You're going to catch way more short pass than deep pass, but when they get a chance to connect on a deep one, you got to make sure you come down with it. And for some reason in practice, I kept being like one yard short. Like it'd be right off the fingertips every time. And uh, I remember Coach Heimerdinger, he came to me and told me, he said, hey, listen, I just, I just gotta be honest with you. You're probably gonna get cut. He said, there's a knock on you that you can't catch the deep ball. You're not fast enough. The Chiefs told me that too, that I wasn't fast enough. I remember the guy telling me I wasn't fast enough. So the first thing I said is, what do I need to do? I just asked. I said, what do I need to do to get better at that? And we watched him tape and he showed me how I was running when the ball's coming with my shoulders open. And so therefore, I can't adjust to catch the ball. He said, you gotta keep your shoulders square and run and just look up 
and you peripherals, you can see the ball. He said, then you catch the ball here. Instead of opening up, it slows you down. And literally, he created this drill. He just throw the ball over my head and I had to run at the last second and catch it over and over and over and over and over and over. Hundreds and hundreds of times that he stayed out there with me after practice to help me develop that skill. I wasn't gonna let that be the reason I couldn't be in the NFL. I wasn't overthrown too many more times after that. After owner Pat Boland hired Mike Shanahan as the Broncos head coach, Rod once again found himself having to prove he belonged on the team. I don't have a contract going into the next year. And then so I do sign back with the Broncos and I gotta figure out a way to make the 53 man roster. I don't wanna be on the practice squad anymore. I had a taste, I had a little taste of what it's like that next offseason, I was just literally honing my craft because remember, I wasn't a receiver, so I had to work on that skill set and um, special teams. I knew if I was going to make the team, it was going to be on special teams. I knew I had to return kicks and punts and do whatever I had to do, cover kicks. I never tackled anybody. I was a quarterback. I didn't tackle anybody, right? But I learned how to tackle. I remember I was hitting the wedge on the kickoff team. I didn't care. I, I tell people all the time, I don't play receiver, I play football. Whatever that means, that's what I play. This game is very, very difficult. It's difficult to get here, and it's even harder to stay. So with that, I, I literally poured everything I had into this craft, everything. You know, and Rod caught my eye because he was a, you know, really, like I said, a first year player. He wasn't a rookie, but had real good, like, skills. I mean, when you watch him in practice, you can tell he ran really good routes, could catch the football, but he wasn't starting. He wasn't our starting uh, wide receiver at the time. Well, you could see that he's gonna work harder than anybody else. He's gonna do the little things to give him a chance to get to the next uh, spot on the roster. And the more he got to know him, the better he got, the stronger he got. And you know, he was a very impressive guy right from the beginning. When the Broncos traveled to Tokyo for the preseason American Bowl, Rod Smith and Terrell Davis found themselves in the land of the rising sun, trying to earn a roster spot. Really the play that kind of sticks out to me is, is the play in Tokyo where I made the hit. Um, you know, I was on kickoff coverage, Rod was on kickoff coverage, and... He's doing what I'm doing. He's trying to make the football team. He ain't TD that everybody knows right now. He's Terrell Davis, <laughs> uh, trying to make the football team on special teams, Terrell Davis. I think he was the five on the kickoff team, and I was the four. Had to get him lined up, because <laughs> he, he wasn't used to being out there, right? I had been on kickoff uh, coverage, at least with the Broncos, so I didn't know exactly what position and, and what I had to do, so... You know, Rod was put me in my place and was like, hey, you line up here and just go down there and make the tackle. And we're running down, and I remember Tyrone Drafer getting the kick. I slipped my block, and I got an angle. And I'm like, okay, he's, got, he's here, he's got to go to here. And I got an angle, and I'm, and I'm beelining in on him. And all of a sudden, dude just get wiped off the screen. And TD blew him up. When I watched the film, I'm pretty far ahead of everybody. <laughs> And the, and the person who's closest to me is Rod. And we talked about that play after I made the play. Rod was like, man, I thought I was gonna make that play. And you'll see on the tape, I was number 19 at the time, and I'm jumping up and down and high-fiving with him. Never saw TD on special teams ever again after that. That was the beginning of a really successful career for me. But then after that, you know, Rod and I, we just became really good friends. The guy who's the MVP of the game got cut. He was a receiver. And it was between him and me. And in my mind, it was between him and me. You know what he didn't do? He didn't play special teams. He played receiver. I played football. I covered the kicks. He didn't cover kicks. He, as a matter of fact, on those kickoffs, he jogged down. And I ended up starting my first year, and uh, you know, Rod wasn't a starter, but he, he was getting some play. Well, if you ever around Terrell Davis or Rod Smith, you know, they're two of the best guys you could possibly be around. You know, personalities, charisma, they got everything that you ask for in a person. And they had, both had so much talent as well. So they were the perfect leaders they have for our football team for years to come. Coming up, Rod Smith makes the team and makes the most of his first career reception. We now return to Rod Smith Catching Greatness, presented by Children's Hospital of Colorado. Rod's first opportunity to prove himself came in week three. The Washington secondary had put most of the Broncos' starting receivers on the sidelines, but John Elway mounted a fourth quarter drive. We're in a battle. I mean, this is a you know game. We're going back and forth with them. It's a pretty high scoring game. James Washington was the safety for the Redskins. He knocked all of our receivers out. 
and I have to go in the game because we, no, we ain't got no receivers. Then we're going to go to overtime. We are going to overtime. This is just one more play before then. Hey, let's say we need it in there. We need to get an answer, all right? Just keep your hands in, hold the stick. Our double wing left, A right, 371, X stick, wide look, the owner. Be ready, Rod. Rod is left. I'm taking a look and I'm saying, which, which side is John going to go on? Because Daryl Green is against Rod Smith. Daryl Green, you know, is the fastest man in the NFL and, you know, he's got speed and it's one on one. It'll be fourth down and 10. Either throw to the end zone, you let everything happen in front of you, they won't be able to stop the clock. Elway firing to Smith. into the game with injuries to the Broncos receivers with a miracle catch. The first catch of his career, Rod just goes up and I, I'm sure, you know, Daryl Green didn't know who Rod Smith was at the time. He's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna cover this guy. But man, Rod had the hops. You'll see me glance up like, like, oh snap, <laughs> he threw the ball. And then I kind of position myself, you know, in front of Daryl Green, like basketball. You know, I played basketball in the hood. <laughs> you got to box him out. So I, I, I kind of boxed him out and gave myself a chance. And I remember the ball hitting my hands. And, and I, when I tucked and I fell in the end zone, I just saw paint. And I knew if I saw the paint, I was in the end zone. And you, and you see a playmaker. I mean, you see that was the beginning of this, this guy who had a very successful career with the Broncos, Hall of Fame career, in my opinion. But those were kind of the kind of plays that you saw Rod make. You know that in order to make that throw, John had to have some confidence in this young guy. It was complete silence until I got off the ground and the, the crowd is roaring and I'm turning around and all of a sudden all the, the whole team is running at me. And they hit me and they knocked me on the ground and the ball is buried in my chest. And I just, you know, you're looking up at the bottom of the pile, you see guys diving on the pile. When I'm at the bottom of the pile, the football's crushing my chest. I barely can breathe. It was like the craziest thing. Little did we know how significant he would be as a wide receiver for us. <laughs> what a great catcher. Everybody was so excited and what a way to start your NFL career. That was, that was amazing. I didn't catch another pass for seven weeks after that. So <laughs> my, my moment was there for the moment. And uh, the best thing is we won. Smith's 95 season ended with six receptions and 152 yards. He battled hard for a starting spot on the 96 roster. However, a broken collarbone in the preseason sidelined him for the first six games. When the Broncos traveled to Oakland to face the Raiders, looking to improve to eight and one, Rod once again rose to the occasion. Oakland up by five. Uh-oh, he's wide open. Wide open is Rod Smith for the touchdown. I don't know anyone that had more heart, that had more, I guess, consistency in his game. I mean, he was so extremely reliable and talented and really fun to watch. He was there to answer the call and, and, and help his teammates out. And you played in that type of atmosphere, you had to be ready, because uh, if you weren't ready, you could be embarrassed very quickly, but Rod did so many things the right way, it didn't surprise me that when he got his opportunity, he took advantage of it. The 96 Broncos were on a roll, finishing the season 13 and three, but a first round playoff matchup against the Jacksonville Jaguars ended their hopes for a Super Bowl. You know, everybody talking about them being an the expansion team and, and we're playing them in the, our first round of the playoffs because we had home field advantage. Honestly, we let our guard down. We let our guard down and they took advantage of it. They made the plays when they had to make those plays. It, it, it lets you know just how small of a margin winning is. That offseason was a very somber offseason, very quiet offseason. We added some pieces that we needed. We got rid of some pieces that we needed to get rid of. That was my first year starting, was coming back the next year. And we switched the standard and the culture of the Broncos the very next year, like that quick, it switched. Because there was a lot of guys left who felt that pain from the previous year. When you do turn a culture around, you have to have people like Rod Smith, 
I want this guy to be my starter. I want him to be the guy that's going to lead our football team. And he had the, he had the backing by everybody. And one thing about players, they know the real people. And they knew that he would be the best blocker. He'd be the best receiver. They know he would be the guy that would be the guy that you could count on in the toughest situations. And that's why he played his career. To see the fruits of his labor, I don't think anybody was surprised because we knew how hard he worked. And, you know, Mike certainly had the confidence in him. He got rid of some great receivers in order for Ross Smith to be uh, the, the starter. I knew they depended on me. They counted on me. Coach had gave up some big names, big salaries for me. And I owed him that. I owed him everything I had. When I had to make a decision, I said it was an easy decision because, you know, at that time, their salary cap, you're dealing with a lot of money. You can look at it and say, all right, this dude, we can win with him. We know, he, we know he's going to continue to grow. We know he's listening. We know that he loves to practice. He loves the game. You know, he was a great role model for the younger guys that were on the team. He knew that every time he was out there, he had to prove to everybody that he's going to hustle in every play. When he didn't get his opportunity, it was because of how he practiced and how consistent he was on a day-to-day -day basis. So that was my mentality. That was my approach. Because I didn't, I didn't know how it was going to shake out. I'm a starter with John Elway and TD and, and Sharp and these guys. I'm in the huddle with them every time. I'm with the ones. A lot of guys like to hear when they say one's up, you love to hear that. And you want to keep that. And me, I have to go earn that right to keep that. And I got to go and do everything I can to make sure I earn their respect as a, as a starter. The players ran the team. They knew what the rules were. They knew what type of preparation we had to have. They knew what we had to do, you know, every week. And those guys would make sure that the scout team was doing what they were supposed to be doing. Their partners were doing what they were supposed to be doing. And on game day, that, you know, that standard would not change. And when you got guys, you know, I could, I could go through 15 guys, I'm just going, oh my God. You know, these players are, they took over the team. It's fun to watch. We, we, we played extremely hard, but it was a switch. When we went across those lines together, it switched. Like, it was nothing you wouldn't do for the next guy. And they knew it. And other teams knew it. You a little scared? Yeah, yeah you look a little scared. I'm scared of what we're going to do to them other than Coming up, with a chip on their shoulders, the 97 Broncos and Rod Smith are poised to dominate the NFL. Welcome back to Rod Smith Catching Greatness. One, two, three, four, four. With a new focus and determination, the Broncos got off to a fast start, winning their first six games en route to a 12-4 record. Rod settled into his new role as a starter and contributed 70 catches for 1,180 yards and 12 touchdowns. However, the rushing game was the centerpiece of the high-powered Denver offense. When the ball was in the hands of Terrell Davis, Rod made sure he was clearing the way for TD to break off big runs. If we don't have Rod on our team to end, you know, the, the entire season in Super Bowl 32, I don't know if we win that. Every piece that we had was important to our team. And I don't know if you, if you take one piece and you, and you take Rod out of the equation, it affects our entire team. And Rod's contribution to our team that entire year helped the run game, it helped Ed McCaffrey, it helped Shannon, it helped John, it helped everybody. And you, you start looking and you're saying, okay, how many rushing touchdowns we have during that season? We, had, we set a record for uh, rushing touchdowns and Rod was a big part of that. People always say, yeah, you had to get off his line. I said, yeah, I had a good line. I said, but we had really good receivers, which to me is the most important part because the line can only get you so far. The receivers are the ones that are allowed to get those, those big runs because they have to block safeties, they have to block corners, sometimes linebackers. And if you have all of those guys in, involved in the run game, that's the, that's the only way it works. You don't see anybody getting down and getting dirty. You know, it was the best joy ever blocking for him and watching number 30 run past me. That means my guy didn't make the tackle. He, he made my career. He made my career better being able to block for a guy like that. The Broncos entered the playoffs as a wild card, this time blowing past Jacksonville and getting the best of the Kansas City Chiefs and the Pittsburgh Steelers before facing the defending champion Green Bay Packers in Super Bowl 32. You know, I remember us being at the first Super Bowl and, you know, the, all the reporters asking you all these questions. 
Well, well, you know, the Broncos lost three Super Bowls and blah, blah, blah. I said, I went on their team. I don't know nothing about that. I said, all I know is this is my first Super Bowl and we plan on coming out here one and We were focused on bringing the title back to Denver for the first time. We had a team of unselfish players. And I'm gonna keep saying that. That's just a word that just, it keeps coming up because that's what it takes. Not, you can't have a, a me guy, it's gotta be a we guy. And whatever we asked of Rod, if we went to a game and, we, and he caught no balls, he had the same mentality as if he caught 12 balls. And I was the same way. If I ran the ball 32 times, whether I ran it five, as long as we won the game, that's all we cared about. Super Bowl 32 not catching a pass and us winning the Super Bowl, that was, that was one of the biggest moments of my life. And some people are like, but you didn't catch a pass, so my ring's the same size as John's. Same size as Terrell, same size as Sharp, same size as Crockett and, and my other boys, Atwater and Zimmerman and you know, Tommy Nalen. My ring's the same size as theirs. It was about team. That's my whole life has been about us, never me. In Rod's own words, we won the Super Bowl and I blocked for Terrell Davis and he was the MVP. That was the greatest game of my life. Rod was all about the team and other people. We won the football 39 times in that game, and we needed to because they had a great defense. And Rod was the key in the, blocking the safeties and the corners and the guys you had blocked to have big plays. And we got a lot of yards that game, and a big part of it was because of Rod Smith and Ed McGaffrey. They, they decided, hey, we might not both get, get one pass, but we're gonna we're gonna have make sure TD has a great day, which he did. You know, John's helicopter play when we needed you know a first down. John, 30 plus years old, and you see him dive head first, and it's one of the iconic plays in sports history to this day. And to be a part of that and watch it was for me was was amazing. But it was just the way we were. We were used to overcoming things, and uh, the previous year set us back but it made us focus and learn to not not take for granted the moment. You saw it individually with plays that were made, Steve Atwater knocking everybody out in the game on defense. It was so many different areas in our game that got us to the point where we were champions. I felt bad in the Super Bowl that, you know, he didn't catch a ball. He goes, are you kidding me? That's the best game I think I played. He said, I mean, I, I blocked my rear end off and he said, my catches will come. And they did, yeah. Coming up, Rod and the world champion Broncos set their sights on a repeat performance. We now return to Rod Smith Catching Greatness, presented by Children's Hospital of Colorado. Denver returned in 1998 with their sights set on back-to-back -back Super Bowl championships. Rod had his most productive season yet, racking up more than 1,200 yards and 86 receptions. The Broncos rolled through their opponents in dominant fashion, winning their first 13 games and ending the season 14-2. Terrell Davis ran for 2,008 yards that year on his way to a league MVP and his third straight AFC rushing title. As expected, Rod Smith, the ultimate teammate, was proud of the contributions he made to TD's historic accomplishments. When he got 2,000 yards, to be a part of that, him, him needing like 180 yards going into the game, some crazy number, and everybody just knuckled up and said, he's getting these yards. And as it got closer, we got more energized. And that was the way we were. If it was a chance for some one of our guys to take down a record or to hit a milestone, we was gonna make sure they did it. Rob was that player that he played hard for everybody. And I know that to be able to go out there and and not only run routes full speed when, you know, even if he's running ghost routes, but then to put your head in there and block for a guy. And, you know, he was a guy that didn't really care if he got the credit for, for doing something. You know, and that to me is huge. TD was one of the best blocking backs ever in the pass protection. And so I couldn't have had the career I had if he wouldn't do what he did, and so it was vice versa. The Broncos posted a decisive 38-3 victory over Miami in the divisional playoffs and overcame a 10-point deficit in the AFC Championship to beat the Jets before moving on to face the Atlanta Falcons in Super Bowl 33. They didn't stand a chance, just being real. 
We were still pissed off from two years ago at everybody and anybody. You go back to back, you, you're you an elite group. There's only, I think, seven or 18 that has ever done it. Now, even today. And we wanted to be one of those teams. We wanted to leave our mark. My thing is I want to catch. <laughs> Can I just get, get one catch, right? I want to go uh, near left with a uh, C counter motion. Bang 19 and oh, quarterback yeah. deep pass right X post. Oh, it's going to be wide open. It is going to be wide open. Red 28! Red 28! Come on! Elway boots and rolls to his right, stops, loads it up, throws down deep the middle of the field. Rod Smith's got it! Here we go! 30, 20, 15, 10, 5. Rod Smith, Denver touchdown. 80 yards for John Elway. I just remember going to John, and I'm seeing the free safety jump the crossing route. And I said, hey, John, there's no way. All Rod's going to do is get a little stutter at the top of his route. He'll go to the post. There won't be anybody there. You know, that sounds good. Now everybody's got to be perfect. Your offensive line's got to do a great job. Quarterback's got to make a great fake. John had great protection. And so it was one of those things that, you know, an 80-yard touchdown, pretty impressive. So it was probably everybody in that play. For Rod to, to make it happen and John to put the ball right on the money, it was a clutch play. You know, we needed that. When I told him, I said, hey, you're going to be wide open. Don't drop it. Just trying to loosen the moment. He looked at me like, I can't believe you said that. Now, after I said I said, that might be the dumbest thing you ever did. So, you never know. Mike knew that play was going to be a touchdown. We all knew that was going to be a touchdown. <laughs> we knew it. And so I was, I was happy for Rod, man, to, to set the tone, open up the, you know, open up that game and, uh, and play big like that. And, and so it was, it, was, it was fun to see him be able to have his moment. Even though it looked like I got the highlight, John got the highlight for throwing a great pass and, you know, me getting an 80-yard touchdown, it was about us as a team, Kubiak, you know, seeing the safety and Coach Shanahan having the courage to trust us as a as a group to call the play. You know, they always said that Rod wasn't uh, Rod wasn't fast enough, right? He was fast enough to go all the way into the end zone on that play. This time, Rod Smith finished the Super Bowl with five receptions for 152 yards and one of the longest touchdowns in Super Bowl history. Winning back to back was sweet. I think it took a lot of weight off John's shoulders as one of the best quarterbacks ever to play the game, to lead his team to back to back Super Bowls. I think it really took a lot of weight off his shoulders and he left his mark right here for me, just the way he approached the game and what he did and was just a tremendous leader. And so I tried to learn as much from him as I could. John Elway announced his retirement shortly after Super Bowl 33. And although it was the end of an era, Rod Smith's most productive seasons were still to come. Greasy protected well, going for six, caught by Smith, touchdown. Brian Greasy took the reins as the Broncos quarterback in 1999. For the third straight season, Rod gained over 1,000 yards, despite the Broncos finishing at 6-10. and 10. Do I want the stats? Absolutely. Do I want every ball to come to me? Absolutely. Yards, catches, touchdown, do I want it? Absolutely. In context of us winning the game, I don't want him in lieu of us winning the game. I want us to win the game. Ryan Greasy taking a look downfield. Throws it out beautifully, and Rod Smith is on the run. He's going to go the distance. Rod Smith is going to take it all the way down and go to the end zone on a spectacular play, a 65-yard scoring play. The following year, Smith set a Broncos record with 1,602 receiving yards, a mark that wouldn't be broken until 2014 by Demarius Thomas. That same year, Rod and Ed McCaffrey became only the second receiving duo in NFL history to catch 100 passes each. The records are important, because that means you produced. A lot of the catches, yards, and touchdowns I had were coming when we, we didn't have as good of a team. You know, so it's, it's, it's a catch-22. What I always wanted to be was a great teammate. I wanted guys to say, this guy made an impact on me when I worked with him. That's what I wanted. Gracie, down the sideline, off, touchdown. Not a bad way to get your 300th career NFL cap. With Greasy as his quarterback, Smith was selected to the Pro Bowl in 2000 and 2001. He had six consecutive seasons with 1,000 receiving yards from 1997 to 2002. 
all my moments have a lot of guys involved. It really do, especially my Denver Bronco moments. It, it just, um, it was never about me. I, I remember one thing that was cool was when I, I lined up at tailback and I had a 50 yard touchdown against Seattle. So I tell TD I could did his job all the time. But on that play, I saw Eddie get a great block. I saw Mac Anderson get a key block. I saw Matt Lepsis get a key block. But those types of moments were individual to me. But I remember every guy who did their job. That's just the way I was. I was, I was really about us. It was always about us. It was never about me. Coming up, Rod Smith continues to focus on the team and the community as he matures into a veteran in the locker room. Welcome back to Rod Smith Catching Greatness. In 2004, Rod Smith was a finalist for the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award for his work and leadership off the field. When I was younger, you hear all the stories about, you know, guys who are an athlete saying, well, I'm not a role model. Well, I wanted to be. I personally wanted to be a role model. I wanted them to be able to look at me and say, well, he grew up over here. If he did it, I can do it. Rod was once again selected for the Pro Bowl in 2005, this time catching passes from Jake Plummer. He didn't look the part, you know, he wasn't this like big, huge, speedy, fast, like specimen. But when I got here, I realized what it was and I realized like why he was Rod Smith. And it was awesome to come here and just go, wow, okay, this guy, this guy does not drop the ball ever. Here's the boot, Plummer pumps once, now throws deep, he wants Smith, Rod's there, Rod's got a foot race, 40, 35, 30, 20, 15, 10, 5, that is a Denver touchdown, 85 yards in near blizzard-like conditions. I wanted them to say Rod Smith and the Denver Broncos, they never did, that's what I wanted them to say, and I never got that, because it was always John Elway and the Denver Broncos, then it was Terrell Davis and the Denver Broncos, and then it was Clinton Porter's and the Denver Broncos, it was Jake Plummer and the Denver Broncos, and it was never Rod Smith and the Denver Broncos. And I wanted him to say that because that meant they respected me for what I did. He was always motivated to get better. It's not about pubbing me, it's about pubbing the work that I did put in, because it, it, it was a tough road. To me, as a former wide receiver, I look to guys that are productive and accountable and tough and tough-minded and will go in the middle of the field uh, when you know you're gonna get lit up and make the catch. There's a mental toughness to doing that. He, he went to work and he continued to work throughout his entire career and had, a, had an amazing career. I'm gonna give it to you, what I got, and I'm okay with the scoreboard not being on my side, but I'm not okay with not, without putting in the effort. He's just, to me, always been a really good example for what a, a Denver Bronco should look like and how a Denver Bronco should conduct himself. Throughout his career, Rod Smith embodied hard work and commitment. He led by example on and off the field, both in his dedication to the sport and his personal life. To this day, he wants to be successful in, in anything that he touches. If you need a little bit of motivation, you know, you're out there, you're feeling a little down, guess what, you look over and you see Rod, full speed running sprints, so like, oh, okay, like, this, this is what we gotta do. Rod wasn't drafted, so Rod knew, hey, I've got to do all the little things, how he ran routes. He, he developed into really uh, an outstanding leader. During the offseason, we have our offseason workouts. It's not mandatory, it's voluntary, and for a number of years, Rod had 100% attendance. He didn't miss one workout in all his years with the Denver Broncos. I've never seen that happen with anybody. Not one offseason workout. I think I went to like 600 and some voluntary workouts in a row. Kind of set the tone for who he was. And so that's a legacy in itself. So it just didn't happen, he made it happen. You look at his work ethic, I think that Rod probably had the, the best work ethic of maybe anyone on that team at that time. Because I knew one day I wasn't gonna be able to do it anymore. So I didn't want to look back and say, if I just went to practice that one day, so. That's just the way I'm wired. In 2006, Rod suffered a hip injury that required a complete hip replacement. 
when you play in the NFL, you're going to be injured. I mean, hopefully you just get hurt. People don't realize you're hurt the whole season. Injured means you're going to miss some time. The hip injury that, that Rod had was, as any injury, it was very devastating. For a wide receiver who cuts and plants and, you know, it just complicates everything. And I think ultimately it became degenerative and, and ended up, uh, you know, getting him in the end. You know, that was from a lot of stopping and starting and falling on the ground. You know, he wasn't able to be out there on the practice field a lot with us. Um, and you could see the pain that he was in, but he was just the ultimate teammate, always helping the younger guys, always trying to talk to not just the wide receivers, but anyone and trying to make sure they, they got on the right path. Thank God it was at the end of my career. So I got 13 good ones in, you know, and, and, and I left everything I had out there. In 2008, he announced his retirement from the NFL. I just knew it was over because I physically the body couldn't recover the way I needed to recover. But like I said, I'm glad it happened when it did versus early. Jake steps in the pocket, plenty of time, pumps, now runs to the left, still throws, back in the end zone, touchdown! Touchdown, Rod Smith! And Rod Smith is 56th career touchdown as a Bronco. That makes him number one in that category in club history. Rod Smith was the first undrafted player to reach 10,000 receiving yards. And to this day, he has the most receiving yards of any undrafted player in NFL history. His 68 touchdown catches are also the most of any undrafted player. Smith still holds Broncos records in receptions, receiving yards, and touchdown catches, as well as the franchise record for receptions in a season. In 2012, Rod's stellar career was acknowledged when he was inducted into the Denver Broncos Ring of Fame. Guys, you know what? You just got to have belief. You got to believe in yourself even when other people don't believe. You got to believe in yourself. He was a free agent, a college free agent. He came in here and worked his tail off and became one of the best wide receivers to ever played this game. And I believe Rod Smith belongs in the Pro Football Hall of Fame as well. He was never complacent, right? And that's what made him so great because he, he never reached his ceiling. He just kept going and he kept breaking ceilings and just like shattering records. If you look at how he just, just played the wide receiver position, he played it the right way. Whether it was blocking all game for Terrell Davis and, and all the other great running backs, he could flat out do it all. Route running, getting over top, tough, tough as nails. And, and, he, and he played some of his best football in the biggest moments. Uh, and to me, that's a Hall of Famer. He was an all-around great wide receiver. And I think if, if the committee can move past the idea that, well, he's, he's only got 800 and some odd catches, if they can look at his, the overall body of work of what he did and, and look at it in the time frame of other receivers that played during that time, I think Rod's credentials are every bit as good as, as anybody else that gets in during that time. An undrafted free agent to arguably the greatest receiver in Broncos history. That's legacy enough. But those who know Rod Smith know that while he was an amazing football player, it was his unrelenting spirit that defined his greatness. He's a, an amazing human being. Um, I'm lucky to know him now, to have met him, to have built our relationship over the 20, 30 something years. Um, I'm really fortunate that Rod came into my life. To me, part of life is dealing with adversity. And, and Rod did that through his life. And he didn't take it as a negative. He took it as a positive and went to the next level. I think the average person can learn from Rod, be resilient, never listen to what other people are telling you about your future. I came into the Broncos with a surgically repaired knee. The doctor told me I would never play football again when I was in college. And I looked him in the eye and I told him, I said, I promise you, I will play again. I said, if I just play backyard football with my kids, I will play football again. You know, he didn't have the advantage of somebody saying, Rod, I'm gonna take you under my wing and I'm gonna make you somebody. You know, Rod signed as a free agent and he made himself somebody. There's a whole bunch of people who coached, guided, and led me to this spot and I want to do that for other people. He's a guy who, once, once you're a friend, you're a friend forever. Rod's just got a good heart. He's just a good heart. I just, I've enjoyed getting to know him over the years. Just the way he's, he's always handled himself away from playing the game of football. It wasn't easy starting at the very, very bottom 
as a player in this organization is the practice squad. That's the lowest form you can get. And then to climb all the way up to the top, you know, having my statue sitting outside out there, that's amazing to me. When I come by, I look at it and I'm still surreal to me that you can start wherever you start, but how do you finish is the key. This special presentation of Rod Smith Catching Greatness was presented by Children's Hospital of Colorado.